It's time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Not looking at anything in the way of rain or snow today, just mostly sunny conditions and breezy to windy conditions over the northeast. That's where we have red flag warnings in effect. Even through the day tomorrow, I'm not expecting anything major as far as showers go, but the winds will return and temperatures starting to cool off as we start the weekend. Fernanda? The 15 year old Kentucky boy charged with murdering two classmates is being arraigned today. The Marshall County High School sophomore is also accused of injuring 18 others in the Tuesday shooting spree. Prosecutors want to try the teen as an adult. New overnight, police in Italy say a commuter train carrying hundreds of people has derailed in northern Italy, killing at least two people and injuring at least 10. The train derailed on the outskirts of Milan. Police say two cars peeled off the rails and came to arrest at an angle. Rescue crews were able to climb in to help passengers escape. New at 6, a manhunt is underway for two suspects in the killing of a deputy in Colorado. The deputy was shot while chasing an assault suspect last night. He later died at a hospital in Denver. Fellow officers held a procession at that time in his honor. Officers uh, say the suspected shooter was arrested after the incident, but police are still looking for two more men. The Colorado Police Foundation identified the deputy as 32 year old Heath Gum. President Trump is in Switzerland bringing his America First message to the World Economic Forum. At the event, often described as the epicenter of globalization and free trade, Mr. Trump is expected to push his agenda. The president insists his administration's tax cuts and deregulation will make the U.S. more appealing to foreign investors. Embattled Michigan State University President Lou Anna Simon has resigned. The decision came just hours after a judge sentenced former MSU and USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser to 175 years in prison for sexually assaulting young gymnasts in his care. Many of Nasser's victims say MSU officials failed to respond to reports of the abuse. A Raton police officer charged with rape and battery has lost his job. Officer Andrew Sanchez is accused of forcing a woman he had been dating to have sex after she told him to stop. She claims he slapped and choked her. State police issued a summons for Sanchez to appear in court to face the charges. Raton's police chief says Sanchez was fired on Tuesday. A former Sandoval County deputy accused of his second crime involving minors is set to be sentenced in the coming month. Former Corporal Ventura Salas is only facing a petty misdemeanor after pleading no contest to peeping in a teenage girl's window, something he claims he didn't do despite a video. At his sentencing, the 16-year-old victim and her family will have a chance to share their story. Happening today, the Bernalillo County District Attorney wants to hear how you feel about crime in Albuquerque. DA Raul Torres is hosting a community forum at Jefferson Middle School tonight from 5.30 to 7.30 inside the school library. It's part of a new effort the office is doing to host question and answer sessions with the public. A bill is being introduced that would lower the penalty of being caught with a small amount of marijuana. The bill introduced by State Senator Joseph Cervantes would make the crime a $50 fine and no jail time if someone is caught with a half ounce of marijuana or less. However, this bill faces heavy opposition from the governor. Kristen. Today's Metro Threat Index at a one. Just some chilly temperatures out there now in the 20s, but no weather concerns this afternoon. Happening today, Sacred Wind Communications is unveiling their plan to power rural residents in the Navajo Nation. They plan on using solar units that can be used on homes without electricity. Now, officials say the solar units can power an internet router, computer, and an antenna. Officials say at least 150 homes on the Navajo Nation will be able to use this technology. <coughs> New at 6, federal investigators are probing General Electric's accounting practices, in particular a possible $15 billion hit to cover insurance miscalculations. GE says it's cooperating with the investigation. Meanwhile, the company recorded a nearly $10 billion loss for its latest quarter. It's been blow after blow for the Dow component. GE's stock has lost half its value over the past decade. And London researchers have modified the common flu virus to attack 
pancreatic cancer. Their study found the virus infects and kills the cancer cells. Doctors hope the virus could one day be used to treat the aggressive disease. Kristen. Time now for a check on traffic. Not seeing anything major out there. We're looking pretty good on both interstates and surface streets. The exclamation point you see there in the southwest corner of this city. We still have construction on a Trisco Drive northwest that has it closed between Bridge and Central, and it's been there for a while. So just make sure to stay away from that area and find an alternate route. Fernanda. A new study by AAA indicates that American drivers are becoming more comfortable with the idea of self driving cars. The study found that 63% of U.S. motorists are wary about riding in a self driving car, but that's down considerably from 78% this time last year. Millennials and male drivers appear to be the least nervous about autonomous vehicle technology. The new American dinner table includes forks, knives, and smartphones. New research from Nutrisystem shows one in three Americans can't sit down to a meal without their smartphone. 29% of those surveyed say they need their phone at the table with them at every meal. More than half want the phone at the table most of the time. Yikes. That's a little sad. Yeah, I know it is. Got to put the phone away. Yeah. Just for whatever, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, all thanks. Seat in peace. All right, time for the five facts you need to know before you go this morning. We will start with number five. Happening today, Kirtland Air Force Base is giving women in the tech field a free behind the scenes tour. It's a first for the Air Force Base and the first time they've reached out to women in the industry in this way. Those on the tour will get a special look at new technology being developed on the base. The lab says it's an effort to inspire women to think about careers in the fields of math, science, and technology. Those tours begin at 8 30 this morning. Morning. At number four this morning, we're watching a bill aimed at keeping film companies coming to New Mexico and attracting more. Representative Mo Maestas proposed a bill doing away with the cap on tax credits for film productions. Right now, the max is $50 million per year. Maestas says that's great at first, but then companies shy away once they reach that cap. The film office reports since 2013, the industry has brought more than a billion dollars to our state. At number three, temperature is warmer today in the low 50s here in the metro. Sunshine across the board. We will see breezy to windy conditions, elevating the fire danger over the northeast this afternoon. Breezy to windy nearly statewide tomorrow. Temperature is falling about five degrees into the start of the weekend. At number two, a local real estate agent accused of killing a man with his car wants back out of jail while he awaits trial. Chris Pino was charged with second degree murder after allegedly running over a homeless man. Pino was released from jail in September with an ankle monitor, but in November he tested positive for meth and alcohol and failed to report to pretrial services twice. Today in court, a judge will hear arguments to determine if he will be released again. At number one, the president says he will accept a pathway to citizenship for dreamers. When the Trump administration announced the winding down of the DACA program, lawmakers were given a March deadline. Now the president also says he may extend protections for recipients if a deal isn't reached by then. Now the president still wants funding for his border wall when it comes to a DACA bill.